Hi, I'm Ovidius. In this tutorial, I'll explain the 403 forbidden error you might get when scraping and how to solve it with three different approaches. Stick till the end as I'll walk you through the Python code for each method so you can get back to web scraping without a hitch. The 403 forbidden error is an HTTP response status code, meaning the website server received your request, understood it, but declined to authorize it. Additionally, any subsequent request to reauthorize will be rejected. For the average web user, it usually means they have insufficient permissions to access a target web page. However, when the error appears while web scraping, it might imply that the website detected bot activity and thus banned access to the server. There are three main ways to solve this error, adjusting and rotating user agents, optimizing request headers, and using rotating proxy servers. It's essential to try out the first two solutions, as poorly set up user agents and basic request headers are the primary signs that give away bot activity on the web. So let's analyze each solution. A user agent is an HTTP header sent to the target website that contains information about the user's device and operating system for web requests. The website examines the user agent and decides to either grant the requester access to the site or decline it, in addition to choosing the content that's fit for the user's device. Fundamentally, user agents include details about the device, operating system, platform, and application being used. Here's an example user agent of a Windows 10 computer that runs the Chrome browser. Now, the first mistake anyone can make when web scraping is not using user agents at all. Every web browser sends a user agent with each web request by passing it in the HTTP header as a string. Therefore, websites expect such information that identifies a web user, and when it's missing, it can raise suspicions, leading to blocked access. You can set up user agents manually or use the actual ones that you can find on the internet. The latter option is the best, as user agents follow certain logical rules that can be accidentally broken when set up manually. The device type strictly dictates the operating system and browser information that should be used. For example, a website would block access to a request coming from an iPhone device that's running on the Linux operating system and using the Internet Explorer browser. This is just impossible in reality. Thus, it can signal a website that there's something off with the request, leading to blocked access and the 403 forbidden error message. Popular Python libraries, like the request library, send a user agent that identifies the library by default. The solution is to use and rotate legit user agents so that HTTP requests would be identified as coming from an organic user. Let's see a code example. This code rotates a list of different user agents with each request. Then it prints the status code and the headers that we've sent with our request. Using and rotating user agents can reduce the chances of getting the 403 forbidden error, but by no means is the guaranteed way to not trigger this response. Suppose you're still receiving the error message with your requests. In that case, it means the target website has more complex anti-bot detection procedure, and you should consider adjusting the information included in your HTTP request headers. So let's talk about setting up the right headers for web requests. 
the main focus should be on their complexity and consistency with the user agent. As every person uses internet browsers to access the web for everyday web surfing, websites also expect specific information in the headers. Modern web browsers send a lot of headers with each request, like the screen size, operating system, and even the user's location. Most of the time, it's enough to come off as an organic web user by using the basic headers that include accept, accept language, accept encoding, referrer, and user agent. But if you're still getting the 403 error, it might be time to add more headers. Let's compare three examples. First, we'll send the request using this simple Python code. The target web page received these basic headers. Now, here are the request headers from the website received from a Chrome browser. And here are the headers sent from a Firefox browser it's evident that the browser sent much more information than our scraper. And you can also notice that Chrome and Firefox browsers send slightly different headers. This sort of complexity should be taken into account when optimizing your own request headers. There's a great resource you should bookmark that explains most of the request headers and sh shows which browsers support them. You can find the link in the video description below. Use that information to optimize your headers and solve the 403 forbidden error. As mentioned before, the request headers must also be consistent with the user agent. For instance, the Safari browser, both on the desktop and mobile versions, doesn't include a sec fetch user header. Therefore, if your user agent specifies that Safari is used and you have included the SecFetch user header, the target website will suspect that your website isn't coming from an actual Safari user. So it's crucial to be accurate and consistent with the details you send with request headers. Let's see an example of how you can set up headers in Python to bypass the 403 error. In this code, we, we're using a Chrome browser user agent with the headers that are supported by Chrome. Again, this solution can only lower your chances of receiving the 403 error. If the issue persists, the target website might have blocked your IP address. Thus, the best op option to use next is to use proxies. When a server suspects the requester to be a bot, its course of action would be to block the user's IP address as it's the simplest solution. Even if you have spotlessly optimized their user agent and request headers, it won't make a difference when the IP address is blocked. Therefore, rotating proxy servers are the best bet to overcome IP restrictions, as each web request can be constructed to come from a different IP address, essentially disguising your actual web activity. Check out this video on our YouTube channel to learn how to rotate proxies in Python. We also have a blog post on the same topic, so make sure to take that a look. You'll find the link to the blog post in the description below. As you can see, it's 
quite a hassle to set up a web scraper that would bypass the 403 forbidden error. For such cases, we have a solution that automatically implements the three methods presented in this video for easy web scraping operations. Web Unblocker is an AI-powered solution that automatically picks the most suitable combination of proxy servers, headers, cookies, and browser attributes for your target website. It, said it has many great features like JavaScript rendering and session control, but in this video, we'll highlight its auto-retry feature. The automatic re retry function, powered by machine learning, determines whether the retrieved content and the status code are valid. So talking about the 403 forbidden error, when the system recognizes that this error is invalid, it automatically retries the request with a different combination of proxies, headers, cookies, and browser attributes. You don't have to do anything from your side, but if needed, you can always adjust the query parameters as you wish. Web Unblocker is easy to set up and effortless to use, so you can be sure to save precious time for other projects. If you'd like to learn more, you can find a link to our web unblocking solution in the description below. If you found this video helpful, make sure to like and subscribe and let us know whether you were able to solve the 403 error. Thank you, and until next time.